Hello and welcome to Hacks, where we try to simplify cybersecurity. We are doing web applications again today, and we're on the Hack This site looking at the realistic missions. Hack This site is a website that allows you to test out and learn new hacking skills. It's a lot of fun, very immersive, and it's worth giving it a go. It's a bit old now, I believe it started in 2003, but a lot of the lessons that I learned on here are still relevant. So we are looking at realistic number nine, crappy soft software. The boss over at crappy soft has stopped paying his employees. Dish. And your friend is in need of money fast. Help them get their salary paid. Now I have already completed this disclaimer, but let's go and take a look. So we have received an email from a client who has neglected to provide a name, but it says, Hey man, I've heard you're good at hacking on the right side of things, so I came looking for you. I need your help. You see, my boss has stopped paying our salaries and I'm going to miss paying my rent. Please help me get my money. You can reach the site at Crappysoft. They have an online payment system, but only he can use it. Maybe you can get into his account somehow, but for now you can use my credentials. And he's provided us with his credentials, so it's R. Connor, Richard Connor maybe. Um, but yeah, let's let's make a note of these credentials. And let's head over to the site. So you can see here we've got a fairly basic web application header at the top, navigation menu on the left. Welcome to our website, CraftySoft, a software company providing software for all. Schools, cool. So they provide schools. So they do have a demo page which allows you to download a demo. I've not bothered looking at that. They've got a contact page which allows you to send an email. They have a mailing list which you can subscribe to. Enter your email address. Note this adds your email to a list. At the same time, checks the list for anything without the at character and deletes it. So at least it looks like they're performing some form of um, validation. But will that be to their unmaking? And then the home page. So not much going on. We could go and look for things like the robot.txt file to see if they're delisting anything. But we do have some credentials. So let's just go ahead and log in. I love my work. I mean, this is a model employee. He should be paying him on time, right? You don't mess with your employees' wages. So, looking around, we have a logout button, uh, private messages, which we can send to different members of the team. MCRAP, owner, crappy software. Love the naming in these uh, realistic missions, this is truly awesome. Uh, pay salaries, but we are not able to access the pay salaries because we are not an administrator. So, what do we do going forward? Well, in order to pay the salaries, we need to be an administrator or we need to be able to impersonate one. And we have this private message functionality, which allows you to send messages to people within the organization. And we can assume that MCRAP is the owner, is the administrator who has the final say on paying salaries. So what we can do is we could try to perform a cross-site scripting attack through the browser that steals his cookies and sends them to us. And then once we have those cookies, we can modify our cookies and attempt to access that pay salaries page. But in order to do that, cross site scripting needs to work. So what, what you would need to do in a real world scenario is set up a web server with a PHP page that has a cookie stealing script on it. Like there's loads available on GitHub. You will not struggle to find one. And you could use something like Python, uh, Python module with a simple HTTP server to throw up a website really quickly. I think it's like Python hyphen M simple HTTP server, but you have to capitalize each word. Then you specify the port. Um, you could just do it via an IP address, but the likelihood is you'll be an internal IP if you're doing that. Uh, you could do some network address translation port forwarding but the best way to do it would be to get a domain have it point to a public ip address and send them the domain with the link in it so in order to do this in traditional blue peter fashion here's one i've made earlier or stolen off the internet 
and as you can see I will walk you through it before so this is the cross-site scripting type of things there are other ways to do this for instance the way I tend to do cross-site scripting is I open script alert XSS and then I close my script properly not with that great yeah and um, that's effectively popping up an alert you could do it to do document.domain document.cookie I don't think document.cookies works that much anymore but yeah if we grab this I believe I've already pasted it in yeah what you can see is it's doing JavaScript void window location equals HTTPS forward slash hacks still cookies.php so it's sending the request to my uh, still cookies.php script on hacks.org which isn't there uh, you don't need it for this challenge and it's sending document.cookie which is going to be the user's cookies so when Mr. Crap opens this important message from his upset employee it will it won't pop up a window but it should send his cookies to me so if we just send this and try it out you can see it's beyond the scope of this mission to check the XSS so assume you got this cookie so yeah it's not really checking the XSS to go out and see whether it's finding the correct page but you can see there we have got some credentials so I'm going to copy those and paste them into sublime quickly always take notes of what you're doing as well I use cherry tree quite a bit when I'm on actual engagements but yeah sublime will do just fine for me as long as you're not putting sensitive information in there so we now have these cookies so what do we need to do well we need to access the pay salaries page now if we an if we analyze the pay salaries page and what's happening when we try to reach it we can see better how we can exploit it now there is a much quicker and easier way to do this but I feel it doesn't really tell you what's going on so if we bring up burp suite and we turn intercept on and we refresh this page and head back to Burp Suite, you will see here that we're trying to access payday.php and what's happening is, is it's doing some sort of validation to see who we are based on our cookies and our passwords and our ID. I haven't tried it just by manipulating each one, perhaps that's something you could do if you've got the time to see whether you only need to provide the username or only need to provide the password but in this case I'm just going to modify all of them and send the request. So if we go back to Sublime uh, we grab the username of Mr. Crapsoft, paste that in first. And yeah, the good thing about Burp is you can just modify it, but there are some caveats to that, unfortunately, which there's probably ways around, but I haven't bothered looking into them because I'm lazy. So that's that string there, that's that string there. And we've got to change that to one because that's what the cookie request said. So, with that done, we can forward the request and forward it again. And now, hopefully, that should put us on the salaries page where we can pay the salaries. However, the problem is now, if we go to pay it, it will be using our cookies that are stored in our browser because we've intercepted it and modified it. We haven't directly modified the contents of the cookies in our browser. So when it sends the post request, it will use our cookies, so we need to modify them again. This is where if you just went into your developer console and into the storage section and modified the cookies directly there, it would probably be quicker and easier, but I feel like it's less educational. And the purpose of this channel is to help me understand it, help you understand it, and yeah. So if we click, if we just make sure intercept is on, common world in testing, and click pay, we can see what I mean. So it's gone back here to the user that I've logged in with because those are stored in my browser, whereas the credentials of mcrap are not. But all we need to do is just grab the values again. Whoops. Paste that in there. Grab this value. Paste it in here and change this value to one and then forward that request and the subsequent subsequent request and what we should see 
Is we're not an administrator? Huh. Interesting. Okay, let's just try that again quickly. That was interesting. Good thing about doing technical demonstrations is that you never know whether it's going to work or not. They should always work, but sometimes... Oh, I think I know what happened. I think I forgot to modify a second request or something. Transaction complete. Okay, so maybe I did do that, but it error for some reason. Interesting. But yeah, so when you click pay, you need to change the values again if you're using Burp Suite. If you just modify it directly in your browser, which I believe you can do just by going inspect. And there should be a storage somewhere. There is an option in in um, <laughs> ah, hang on, is this it? Well, it says I got no cookies. Uh, yeah, there is an option in here to somewhere to find them where you can modify them directly. But you know, let's not get too sidetracked. So now that we've paid, our Connor is showing tr transaction as complete. Let's turn intercept off. Because it says, yeah, man, thanks for the salary you really own. Don't forget to clean the logs by subscribing to them. So don't forget to clear the logs. Now, the only thing that we can subscribe to on here is the mailing list. And we did note this earlier. This adds the email to the list at the same time, checks the list for anything without the at character and deletes it. So perhaps we can use this sanitization to trick the sanitization into deleting the log files. But in order to do that, we need to know where the log files are and how this mail script works. So let's quickly inspect and see what's going on. Now, I do apologize if this is a bit small. But uh, yeah, you should be able to see it there. So we can see there what's happening is, is a post request is being submitted to subscribemailing.php. And that post request has a hidden form so you won't see it on the page because it's hidden. You can obviously see the type there is hidden so it doesn't show up. And it's saying str string file name is dot files mailing list addresses dot txt. So it's posting whatever you submit to this box here to the mailing list, which is in addresses dot txt. Now, again, you shouldn't really hide values like this in in hidden fields because malicious threat actors can just come in and modify them and submit them back to the server uh, because it's it's being rendered client side so let's just have a look to see if we can actually access this file so realistic nine let's take the dot a and that upper directory Brilliant. So let's close the console quickly. So you can see that we can access the mailing list and it's in a directory called files, mailing list addresses. Can we go up a directory into mailing list? We can. And you can see that there's the addresses. Can we go up another directory to the parent directory? We can. And you can see here, this is the download section for the demo software that they've got. And we can also see we have logs. And in logs, there is a logs.txt. So what we can do with this is based off of that hidden form. Let's make a list of that actually. So let's go to logs and check the log files and let's get the actual URL path. And paste it in there. And let's come back to here. Realistic nine. And let's go to mailing list. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn Burp Suite back on, insert back on just so we can see what's happening to the request. So turn it on. 
back to there and I'm just going to put any string in here without an at symbol because remember it needs to not have an at symbol in order for the validation, the sanitization to delete whatever's inputted into the file if it doesn't have an at symbol. So I'm just going to go Joe Hacks and click subscribe and then I'm going to jump over to here. Right, I'm going to have to move this window down a bit. Okay, so what you can see once this goes away, there we go, is it's doing the post as we identified in the form, in the source. It's using our credentials, but that doesn't really matter. You've got all your sort of standard headers, you've got your user agent, but then you've got these parameters down here. And you can see that it's trying to submit the email address, which doesn't have an at symbol in it, to addresses.txt which is in files mailing list. Now the reason why it looks like this is because it's URL encoded. So it's taken anything like forward slashes or special characters and it's URL encoding them to their values so that they can be easily interpreted. Um, so what we can do is if we grab this, and I don't think we need to URL encode it, whoops, and head back over here and just substitute this value for the mailing list and click forward, the behavior that we're hoping to happen is that it sees that it doesn't have an at symbol in the username, but that it deletes logs.txt rather than the value in the mailing list. The logic in this is somewhat a bit odd. Um, should it really delete the whole logs file folder? I mean, the logs file, would it delete the whole mailing list if you didn't have the user in the mailing list? If so, that would be a bit Hmm, a bit odd. But anyway, I digress. Um, I believe this is how you solve that. This is how I solve the mission. So if we just click forward and forward again and forward again and then go back to the website, you will get a congrats, you have completed mission nine, whereas I get an error to say I've already completed it. Um, but yeah, this this was a fun challenge. It was a bit of a maze getting from A to B. Honestly, I did have to look up a few bits here and there to see what was going on. Uh, I really liked the cookie stealing part. Um, perhaps in the future we will actually do a demonstration where we can set it up on a web server running like the PHP web server or the Python web server with the cookie stealers. I've got a few domains lying about that we could use as malicious domains just for the purposes of an exercise. But I enjoyed, you know, stealing the cookies, sending them to our domain name. I should have tried it to see if it actually sent it, but never mind. I'm sure it would have. Um, yeah, so that, that was really fun. And, and how you can prevent against that is input sanitization. Um, Cross-site scripting is a huge problem on sites. It can allow you to do malicious things as demonstrated here. It's something we check for on every test as well. It's it's one of the first things. And uh, the pro version of Burp Suite makes it very easy to automate it. You can just get a list of payloads and go through them all and check the response lengths to see if they differ. If they differ, if they're different. Um, so yeah, you need to have some input sanitization there to get rid of special characters, uh, not just words, you know, you need to have a proper like input filtering that doesn't just do it on script because there's ways around that or just on the open and close brackets greater than less than brackets because you can get around that. So then we stole his cookies, which again is a, is a problem. Um, session cookies are, you know, they are a way for malicious threat actors to steal your session and gain access to the application as they were browsing it as you. Uh, this could allow them to make any changes to access, destroy or modify potentially sensitive information, uh, which is bad. You don't want them to be able to do that. Um, a lot of the times, what a good solution to implement is is something called an anti cross site request forgery token and it's a unique token that's created a bit like a session token but it's for every sort of action you take on the website so if i went onto a website and i tried to and i reset my password a malicious threat actor could intercept that request and replay it to change it to a password of their choosing now what a cross site request anti cross site request forgery uh, token would do is it would ensure that if they try to submit it as as a as a, like another request from the same request is that the 
anti-cross site request forgery token will not be unique uh, and it will not be valid so it will just fail um, so that could help with that but it doesn't really prevent so well it should prevent um, session hijacking but also limiting concurrent loggings and things like that there are lots of things you can do to prevent sort of session hijacking in the way that we've done this way um, uh, what else do we have to do so yeah uh, clearing the log files again this will come down to don't put things in hidden forms uh, it, you know it doesn't take much to view the page source and see that oh you've got a directory there what happens if we modify that parameter to try and get in it, it really doesn't offer much protection you know it's, it's hiding something in plain sight essentially um, so that's not a good idea. If you're going to have a button like that, have it call back to a script on the server that the user can't see or access or modify on a phone. So when you on a phone, so when you just press the button, it sends a request to the server and it clears it that way, rather than being able to submit. Well, rather than submitting everything in the post request. But yeah, I believe that's covered everything. I may have rambled on a bit long this time, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it, or at least found it informative, and maybe helped you past your realistic nine, but you shouldn't have watched the video until you passed it, just to make sure you're doing it right. Gotta learn these things. I do it all the time. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's all I've got. If you did like it, give me a thumbs up. If you found it informative, maybe you could subscribe. And I will see you next time, where we are looking at realistic ten. Kind regards. Please hang up and try again.